Thank you, everyone. I appreciate uh, giving us the opportunity, Nasuni, here to speak to you about best in class ransomware protection. Um, it was incredibly helpful to hear the testimonials just before here, to hear Mason talk about what it was like to actually go through an attack. And what I'd like to talk about is a solution that we have at Nasuni. It's built on top of Amazon's S3. And the one thing I can say with pride and also with knocking on wood a little bit, no Nasuni customer has ever had to pay the ransom. No Nasuni customer has ever had to pay a ransom. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why that is. Because it's something about our technology, it's about how we use our technology alongside of S3, the most scalable storage solution in the world. But there's something very unique about how we store and share versions and how you can recover from an attack. And I wanna talk about that today. So first, a little bit about Nasuni and who we are. And there we go. So Nasuni is a solution for file services. We're a solution to store large amounts of data. But it's not just storing, it's about protecting the data and it's accessing the data. But we're an integrated solution where you can put as much data as you want into one large infrastructure, one large file system and have it available to anyone who needs access to it. And just to give you a sense, this is a type of technology that is being adopted by leading edge companies, particularly in healthcare life sciences. So you can see a couple of them right here. So we're really proud that someone like Johns Hopkins or Takeda, that Shire, Baxalta, Biogen, companies like this have trusted us with their data. Again, not just because we can store the data, but we can protect the data. And I'll talk a little bit more about why that is in a second. And I'm just getting used to my clicker and it will definitely work in a second. <laughs> uh, there we go, there we go, all right. So if there's, one, um, if there's one slide I want you to walk away with, there's one thing that you wanna remember from this presentation, it's this right here. This is really, really important because this is the critical innovation that has helped customers protect themselves from ransomware. And it's this, it's basically the fact that we have a best in class ransomware rapid recovery. It means that it doesn't matter how many files you have on your system. It doesn't matter how big the attack was. We have literally shown that you could have a petabyte of data, 100 million files attacked. The time to recover is minutes. The time to roll back your system to the point where you actually have access to all of your files, they're no longer encrypted, is minutes. That's very, very different from what other solutions are like. Almost all the problems you hear about ransomware attacks and the encryption has to do with the fact that you have to get back to the state where the files are accessible. That's a hard problem when you use old infrastructure, when you're using traditional on-premise infrastructure. It's made a little bit easier by the solutions that try to back up data to the cloud. So again, if you're a traditional backup, if you've got, let's say, 10 million files that need to be recovered, you're probably talking about weeks. If you cloud backup, you're probably talking about days, but with Nasuni, you're talking about minutes. That's why ransomware attacks on Nasuni are rapidly recovered. So let me talk a little bit about what Nasuni is. So it's a file data services platform. Think of us as a replacement for a NetApp or an Isilon or your Windows file servers. This is a way in which you can store data and it looks just like your traditional file server. It looks just like that shared drive I have that I use to share my files across my organization. But underneath all of it is gonna be Amazon's S3 object storage. So it's really important. We have a massively scalable file system. And the second piece about it is it's infinitely versioned. So here's a really important point. Every time I make a change to a file in Nasuni, I am putting data into S3. I'm putting an object into S3, that's my file. But what accompanies that file is a tiny little object which we call a manifest file. And it basically says, here's the version of the file if you need to go back to it. So every time I make a change to a file or to a folder, I have a manifest file that goes with it. So a typical customer for ours, let's say it's a 400 terabyte customer, they've been with us for four or five years. How many restore points do you think there are in that system? And those restore points are those little manifest files, little place where you can actually restore back to. Thousands, tens of thousands, millions, 
1.7 billion. For about 400 terabytes of 1.7 billion places that you can restore your entire file system. That is the innovation. The innovation is that we are always versioning and we're making it easy to restore back the file or the folder. That means if a ransomware attack happens and I encrypt a folder that could be 100 million files, restoring it is as if I just restored one file because it's one little manifest file. That is the massive innovation and that is why it's become very, very, very valued by many of our customers to have their data on the SUNY. Uh, and I am still struggling with my clicker. There we go. Okay. So when you think about Nasuni and you think about protect, you think about being able to defend against ransomware, think about these four things. These are really, really important things that you need to do. Whether it's actually Nasuni or you're actually storing on anything else, you need to be able to protect your files first and foremost. And most people think about that traditionally around like recovery point objectives, backups. I think Mason even said earlier today, he said, I learned a lot about backups. CEOs shouldn't know about backups, right? CEOs of companies should know about backups. They just should just know that if something happens to my files, I can get back to them. But protection is really, really important. And like I said, we protect in a way that is very, very easy to restore back to different points. But on top of that, we also do best in class detection, response, which I'll talk about in a second. And then, like I said, the recovery piece. It's really, really important when you have millions of files to be able to recover back as quickly as possible. I will, oh, there we go. So let's talk through what a typical attack would look like on, on the SUNY. So it starts with the fact that you're always snapshotting the data. It starts with the fact that you're always protecting the data. So those edge caches where I write my data to, snapshot that data to the object store, to S3. I can set those at a rate of every minute, every five minutes. So every minute I'm putting a little pointer into the cloud that says, hey, this is the last time that volume was consistent. But again, it's not just those individual, the entire volume that has a restore point. It's everything that changed at that moment in that last. If I changed 20 files, 20 new restore points. If I changed 5,000 folders, 5,000 new restore points. Our innovation is that we're always protecting that data. So number two, edge detection. So there's something really powerful about having an edge that's separate from the core. The edge is where I access the data. It's where I write my data. It's where I read my data from. And in our edge detection, we actually know what's coming into, oops, sorry about that. We know what's coming into the, um, the appliance and we can detect whether or not there's a pattern that looks a lot like a ransomware attack. So with our ransomware protection, what we have are signatures that we update every few hours that get sent down to those edges that say, we're looking for these types of attacks. Once you notice those attacks, that's when we kick in with our mitigation policies. And this is one of the things customers absolutely love about us, which is we can now build in rules to say, what happens if I start to see this attack? Well, the most important thing is you want to stop it from happening. The most important thing is you want to make sure whoever is writing to that pattern stops writing. That's an automatic thing that can happen with our in inline edge detection. The second thing is you don't want the data that's on that edge there to go into the cloud. You don't want to propagate it. You don't want to put it as part of your version stream. So the next thing you can set up, you can set up rules that will say, hey, don't push this data. Let's stop the user from writing the data. Now let's keep all that data on the edge cache so we can do something about it. Finally, it's about the, the, the two steps of rapid recovery. I've now sent an email out to the administrator saying, I think there's something going on on that edge device there. I think someone has actually done something that we should be aware of. The administrator is made aware of it. Now they can do the rapid recovery. So let's say that within a minute, we were able to encrypt 100,000 files. It, in seconds, I can bring those 100,000 files back again. And then a very nice little thing at the very end here. We'll actually do a nice little incident report for you. We'll do the whole TikTok of when it started, when it happened, and you know, what the resolution was. You don't have to write that. We, it's a template that just kind of comes out of the system. So let me just talk about some of the value here again. Number one, it's simple. When you're traditionally thinking about file infrastructure and you're thinking about protection, you think of multiple technologies. Well, we looked at this and we said, well, we know we can actually do a fantastic job with storing files and protecting files. That's when we said, hey, we can actually do a good job of detecting these problems. So we decided we're going to expand what we do so it all could be part of one solution. So very, very simple for the operators to use. Second, it's about scale. 
we don't worry about scale because we've built everything on top of S3. We don't worry about scale because S3 scales to petabytes and petabytes and petabytes of data. We have yet have someone tell us, hey, I ran out of space in my S3 bucket. Um, Amazon does a great job of just giving us objects whenever we need them, billions and billions of objects. And then the savings, and two really important parts of the savings. One is, you know, you spend a lot less time investigating now because we have incorporated the detection system into our platform. But the most important is the business continuity. And this is exactly what customers love about being on the SUNY. Customers don't even come to tell us that they got attacked anymore because it's so simple to recover from it. And it's the fact that ransomware attacks for them, the encryption ransomware attacks are annoyances. They're annoyances, they do not stop the business. So, I just wanna come back to the one slide I started with, just to remind everyone again. If you have to take one thing away from this, it's this. With Nasuni, it doesn't matter how many files are attacked. It doesn't matter how big the volume, it doesn't matter how big the infrastructure, it doesn't matter how significant the encryption attack was. You can recover a single file, you can recover millions of files, you can recover an entire volume in minutes. No other solution out there can say that, and this is why our customers love us. And thank you so much. I appreciate this. Any questions? I have a quick question. We're seeing a lot more MSPs attack. It's easier and quicker than that. Yeah. So, but they can still be ransomed. How does this help the end user? It's a third party. So we're working with a lot of, a lot of our customers act as MSPs for, for their customers. And so what we, what we encourage is if you're gonna be evaluating an MSP, you should really be asking them, what is the time to recover? To me, the most critical question for almost any kind of ransomware protection technology, the, the critical metric our industry and some other industries are really getting behind is, what is the mean time to recover? I think you can actually say the average time or the, uh, um, the shortest time to recover, but let's just say mean time to recover. So that's what I would do. I would tell customers when you're evaluating your MSPs or when I'm thinking about engaging an MSP to um, provide hosted solutions for me, let's go through a real scenario. How long would it take to recover if we got attacked? And that's why we highly encourage people to really check us out because that's the thing that we focused on. They, they don't, but this is right. Everyone tells you secure. This is where, you know, we have to start encouraging people. You got to show me the numbers, you know, because the time to recover is the thing you're going to care about at the end of the day. Um, and so, you know, I'm proselytizing a little bit on this one. Please go out there, ask people how long it takes to recover. Was there a question over here? Yeah, so if you're backing up every minute, it's, it's versioned every minute. So it's not technically the full backups. So it's, it's incrementals, but yeah. Yeah. what effect might that have on performance? technology that doesn't affect production? Yeah, so the way you, I didn't get into a lot of the details of it, but the actual file system is on these edge caches. Those edge caches are really designed for file performance to the end user. But it does have a process on it, which is doing the, um, the analysis, which will allow you to then write to the cloud. So um, in the early days of us, there was a performance hit whenever the snapshot was happening. You know, snapshot would happen, we had a, what's called a cow device, copy on write device, you have to make a full copy and then do all the, the transformations. As of about a year ago, we've actually taken that out. So now you can continue to write to the device, but we're always doing these little snaps and these little like pushes up to the cloud. And it's really kind of the cleverness around the, where those um, consistency points are. And so uh, there's not the same traditional like snapshot type of function that's happening. It's more of like a continuous stream of little changes. And then every so often you basically do a, 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 a big sort of metadata analysis that says now all this is gonna be snapped, all the metadata will be snapped to the cloud. Any other questions? All right, thank you so much. Really appreciate the time.